Welcome to Municipal Month on the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am pleased and honored to have our guest on to the show today. He is a two-term mayor for the town of Penhold in central Alberta, Mr. Mark Mike Yarjo. Mayor Mike, thank you so much for doing this. This is an honor and pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. So your worship, before we get started, I, I asked the exact same question to all political entities who come on this show. So you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Uh, I sort of grew up doing stuff like this. So uh, when I was a when I was a kid, my parents were always actively involved. My dad was on Penhold Council when I was young, and my mother was the chairperson of the school board. Uh, and we were involved in provincial campaigns. So. I mean, I remember door knocking uh, when I since I was 12 years old for candidates. Um, so, you know, when I when I became an adult, I worked out on the road for a bit, so I, I didn't really do much. And then I, I had an opportunity where I was working home a lot. So I ran for council and it's kind of went from there. And in 2017, you took your first shot at the mayor's chair in the town of Penhold. Can you talk me through what your decision was based on when you ultimately decided to put your name for it to be the next mayor of the town of Penhold? You know, we we had a, a group on council that um, we, we were working quite well together, but there was, I wasn't always happy with with the way some of it was going. And uh, some of that, I, I, I sensed we needed a bit of a change uh, at the top. So I decided to run uh, and and you know, at the time, I had the support of my colleagues on council, and thankfully, I still do. And um, you know, if you look at the the, the demograph demographics of Penhold, our average age is about thirty three years old. We're a very young community, and I don't think that was always coming through um, with our representation of uh, on councils. So that, that's how I, I made the decision, and I've uh, I've loved it ever since. The being a councillor and being a mayor are two separate entities in itself. Uh, I want to stick to this mayor vein because that is your current yeah. job. And I want to ask the question that I've asked every other councillor and mayor who's come on this month uh, long series that we're doing. And that is the weight of responsibility that you hold as the mayor of your council, the day-to-day -day decisions that you make on that, at that council table affects the day-to-day -day lives of your neighbors, your friends, your family. How much of responsibility of the, is that for you as mayor of the town of Penhold? Well, I love the way you word that because I talk about responsibility all the time and responsible leadership. Um, so it, it's something I, I think about constantly. I mean, everywhere I go, and I mean, you can ask my wife every, everywhere I go, it's about, you know, I, I am the mayor of Penhold wherever I go. So I, I that's always at the front of my mind. I, I'm never I'm, I'm never going anywhere looking to embarrass myself or embarrass the town. I, I always want to want to represent the town well, no matter what I do. And it's important um, when I talk to people about about leadership and decision making to, to really stress the responsibility that comes when you're when you're the mayor of a community. Um, people people expect more from you. Uh, and it, I think it's it's incumbent when when you are a mayor uh, that you have to you have to show that you're up to that. Do you, do you find yourself having a hard time balancing that work life responsibility? Because I've asked many politicians of all political stripes that question, and as a local mayor, someone a, of a town size community, you know everyone when you go grocery shopping. So you yeah. you can't randomly go out grocery shopping to go get groceries or milks at eight o'clock at night because you might be stopped and asked yeah. a question about municipal politics. How hard is it to balance that work and life? Because you say you're always Mayor Mike, but yeah. there has to be Mike the person and the mayor uh, as well. Yeah, so I mean, like the, going out for groceries is a perfect example. There are sometimes in the evening where you know i just i just i'll tell my wife or one of the kids be like look you got to go to the store and get this because i i just can't go tonight so i'm i'm kind of i i call myself an extroverted introvert when i'm out in public i'm fine i i love talking i love talking about penhole i love meeting people but then when i get home you know sometimes i just want to put my sweatpants on watch some baseball and not not talk to anybody right <laughs> uh so i go through I'll be in a at home and in that kind of mood, and yet somebody else has to do this. I'm not leaving the house. So that's my 
Do you, yeah. do you do you ever get stopped at the local grocery store oh, yeah. and just say, I, I can't today, guys. I apologize. Yeah. I would love to, but I have to go home and get the uh, dinner that's on the table. I don't I don't usually say no. So if people <laughs> want to talk to me about Penhold um, when I'm in the grocery store, I'll talk. Uh, if it goes on for a long time, I might say, yeah, you know, I've got to take off. But um, it, when you're in a small community, any community, really, it's tough to get people engaged. So I don't I never want to to put someone off and make them feel like they're not being heard because it, it's hard enough for them to, to come up and talk to you. Sometimes they're, uh, they are, they're not used to doing something like that. Um, and I want to encourage people to be engaged in, in their local government whenever I can. It seems like people in Penhold are engaged though, because I, I try to do a little bit of research before I sit down and do these interviews. And it seems like your community is actively engaged on what council's doing. Was that a priority for you to ensure, uh, politically uh, motivated, uh, de democratically engaged uh, residents were a part of your community when you were first elected as mayor? Yeah, we do a lot of work um, communicating with residents and figuring out better ways to communicate. Um, you know, something as small as we used to have a, a local newspaper that was based out of a different community, but they would cover Penhold. And we were paying a, a, a monthly fee to, to have some coverage in there and do and then anytime we would do community surveys and get feedback nobody was ever hearing about us from that paper they just weren't it, the coverage wasn't wasn't what they wanted to see and it wasn't there was no value to it for us so so then we changed we do a lot more outreach events where people can come talk to us we do a lot more online marketing we do radio stuff now that that i mean i have people come up to me all the time say oh i heard this on the radio i heard like it's been a huge, a huge thing for us. And it gets us out there, not only to Penhold, but when we put events on, people in central Alberta are hearing about it and talking about Penhold. How hard is it for a municipality your size to communicate to its residents? Because as a former marketing and communications for a municipality, I know you can do 100% of the things. There's going to be that one group of people who say, I didn't hear it. I didn't know about it. Why Absolutely, you didn't do yeah. it this way? So how hard is it for a, a community your size to market, but also a market to everyone while trying to market to everyone? Yeah, I, I always say people don't want to know what they don't want to know. And, <laughs> and, and a lot of times people don't want to know about what's going on in their community. It's not it's not something that's important to them. So that's where we have to go. So in Penhold, because we're such a young community, we, we have a lot of family family events. So our community services people program these specifically because that's where we get to meet the parents is by putting something on that they can bring their kids to. And then their parents can meet the mayor and council and meet some of the staff. And we can get some feedback that way because for us, that's what's, that's what's successful in bringing people out. Um, and you see, anytime we do community events in Penhold, we just finished our fall festival. I mean, we get thousands of people come out. Um, it, it's our biggest thing of the year, but yeah, it's, it's really good to hear from people too. Before we talk about the community as a whole, I, I want to sort of pose this question to you, because you are a mayor, you are one vote on that council, you are the director of that council, you, you sort of set the agenda with the CAO and uh, the administration to dictate what the agenda is going to be like, but I want to know from you, how hard is it to balance the need of the one against the need of the community, because Every person who comes up to you will tell you that their issue is the most important issue in the community, in the town of Penhold. They'll say, I need my pothole fixed in front of my house because that's affecting me. But as mayor, you have to look at the town as a whole, and council does too, in some sense. How hard is it to balance that need of the individual against the need of the town? So one, yeah, as I've, as I've been the mayor for, for a few years now, and I used to be very easily sucked in by those issues. So someone would come to me with an issue and I'd be like, yep, we've got to do this. We've got to get on this now. Uh, and I'm a lot more patient. And I understand that sometimes government doesn't work as fast as people want it to work. But uh, I I know that, okay, we've got to look at this in the, in the greater perspective. I remind my council of that all the time. And I'm very fortunate too, that we do have a really good group here um, that I work with that, that understand that too. So, you know, I, I try to be empathetic when somebody has a an issue that is very urgent to them, but also I'm, I'm very clear with them that, okay, we, we, we need to look at this and how it affects the, the entire town and what we can do about it that way. Are people understanding about that? Are people understanding about the fact that, you know what, while it might be an important issue to them, 
uh, the larger f- photo, the larger picture can't always be about that local individual. For the most part, I'd say they are. You know, um, if they're if they're if they feel like they've been heard and they know that we we haven't forgot about it, and there are times where where sometimes they they'll come back and you have to remind them, yeah, we we are still working on this. We don't have a solution yet. As, as long as you're open and honest with them and don't just brush them off. Um, I, I've been pretty fortunate in Penhold that I, I don't have, at least not to my face anyway, I don't have a lot of people that that uh, get angry or get upset with me because I'm pretty straightforward and I I don't mind uh, I'm talking to them and telling them, you know, the, explaining the process to them. I want to turn to the Penhold as a whole now, and I want to ask this question, and I want to preamble that question with this. This is a conversation between Mayor Mike and myself. This is not a council uh, decision. This is just his opinion, only his opinion, and what happens at council table is going to be something completely different because they look at it as a bigger picture. But Mayor uh, Mike, what is the biggest issue, in your opinion, that is facing the town of Penhold today? Uh, it would be our, our growth and how we manage it. So Penhold is a, is a very, we're a bedroom community in, in a lot of ways. Uh, we're so close to the city of Red Deer. So a lot of our residents uh, work in the city or work out, you know, out, out of the community anyway. Um, our commercial tax base is very low. We're, I mean, right now we're probably at about 90% residential and 10% commercial. And that's really not, not healthy for a community. We need we need to expand that commercial tax base. So we've done a lot of work uh, with some annexations and trying to bring some new businesses in. And we, we, we're getting more. And I mean, when I started, we were probably about 96% residential. Um, it, it is happening. It's a slow process. Uh, we're competing with, I mean, Central Alberta is quite a, quite a busy place, you know, between Calgary, Edmonton and everything in between right now. It's all growing, right? So we're all competing with each other. We're all trying to get the same thing for our communities. Uh, but for Penhold, it's, we've struggled for a lot of years with uh, part of its uh, uh, reputation that may not be true anymore, but a reputation of having higher property taxes than, than surrounding communities. Uh, we've done a lot of work in the last few years to address that uh, to the point where we're, we're quite competitive now. Um, but we still, do, we still do need to be bringing, bringing new business in and some, some larger developments, especially in the lands that we've annexed recently. So how do you do that? How how do you make Penhold stand out against the other communities around you? Because that's a challenge that a lot of people are facing right now. And you are not the first mayor or council can, uh, person who's come on this show and said that is their biggest issue. Is how do yeah. you how do you fight for commercial uh, or organizations and businesses to come to your community when right down the street someone else is doing the exact same thing and they're trying to get that same business how have you been able to do it and how have you been able to take it from 96 residential uh property tax uh sort of encompass to 90 percent that is right now so we've been pretty aggressive in the last especially the last three years putting putting ourselves out there marketing the town we've been working with some I guess you would call them consultants uh people that are that are helping us reach out to businesses and talk to them we're also really really working to be supportive of our homegrown businesses and, and uh, encouraging them to expand and allowing expansion, at least making it as easy as, as, easy as we can on the municipal side for them. Uh, we, we've done a lot of work in our planning department to reduce red tape. I mean, when you look at, at like development permits, we can, we can have a development permit done and approved you know, within days, whereas when you're working in a city, you, you could be months. Um, larger cities are, are a lot longer than that even. So we really try to streamline the process. We we push ourselves to be a development friendly town. So we want to work with developers. Uh, that doesn't mean we give them everything they want all the time because it, it's it's a bit of a give and take there when you're going back and forth. But uh, we really try to to put ourselves out there and, and be known as a business friendly community. While attracting business is a is a big priority, it seems like for the uh, town of Penhold. Business also means workers. Workers means more population. So you need to attract people to your community as well. How has that been working? Are people looking for that small town feel in today's age? Because we just went through a pandemic where a lot of larger cities were closed down. Smaller cities and communities had the luxury of being able to have more open space so it wasn't as i shouldn't say hard but wasn't as uh, cumbersome to smaller communities like penhold than others 
are you trying to attract uh, residents to your community as well, along with businesses, or is it strictly on the business front right now? No, no, we we haven't stopped growing. I mean, you you go back pre pre COVID and pre sort of the recession, we were building over a hundred houses a year in Penhold at one point. Now we're not doing that right now, but we haven't stopped growing either throughout the the last few years. Um, you know, like I say, we're a very young community, young families when they're looking at at places to move and put places to grow their family they see Penhold and they see the, the community events they do. They see the facilities that we have in our community. So um, it, it, we, are, we are an attractive place for, for the type of demographic we're looking for, which is young families. Um, we have some new home buyer incentive programs that, we, that we've rolled out, which is kind of a first of its kind in central Alberta. So that's helped bring in some, some new development. Um, so it, it, it's not that it's been easy, but it's something that we've all, we've always been a, an attractive place for people to come in central Alberta. Uh, so we haven't struggled with that side as much. So while we can talk about growth as a main issue for the community, as you said, it's in your opinion, the number one issue. I want to ask the, the, the honest follow-up question to that is if that issue was fixed tomorrow, if tomorrow morning you woke up and the growth issue was not a big uh, issue, according to the mayor, what would be issue number two that you'd have to tackle? I mean, it's probably easy to say, but um, community safety, crime prevention, stuff like that. We we don't have overly high crime rates by any means in Penhold, but um, when you small towns aren't aren't immune to um, drug issues or or anything that's kind of related to that, and, and to me, it all sort of flows together so when we have increased property crime it's usually related to drug use and all that other all that other stuff uh we don't have an rcmp detachment in penhold so we do have we are serviced out of uh, a, a neighboring municipality but we don't have that um presence that people sometimes look for um it's something residents want to see they don't always understand the costs that are associated with that um but it, it it's one of those things that sort of makes you feel better if you see police cars in your community more often. Do you have a good re working relationship with the RCMP and the other communities? Yeah, yeah, we've always had a good working relationship. Uh, we're in the uh, kind of a transition where our our staff sergeant has left, and we'll have we have an interim one. Uh, but but aside from that, we've always you know worked well with them. They've they've been very um, forward with with Penhold when they communicate with us. We do get RCMP coverage in town. Um, the problem when you get out, it, I mean, it, it's a rural issue, but it is really an everywhere issue is they, they don't have enough, they don't have enough money or enough manpower. Um, you can't get an officer on, on every street, right? It's never going to happen. You might not have an officer within an hour of Penhold at, late at night, uh, because that's just the way it is. They don't, they don't have enough officers to cover all the ground they have to cover. Um, so it's, it's a challenge. We've looked at ways we can sort of support the local RCMP um, but there's costs associated with that, right? I mean, it, it's uh, it's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars if you want to bring an, an RCMP officer in your community, and then you still don't necessarily control what that RCMP officer does, right? Um, so. does, does the town have bylaw enforcement officers? I'm assuming so, correct? Yes, yes, we do have bylaw. So are they are they picking up a lot of that extra work that potentially the RCMP might be doing? Because I know I, I worked in a rural community. I know the issues that rural communities are facing. And I know that the bylaw enforcements in the northern area where I came from had to pick up a lot of that extra manpower uh, to balance out the hey, the call four hours out of town because the RCMP detachment was in our community, but they serviced a large area. Yeah, so our peace officers are, are really active in the community and they handle a lot. I mean, we are, I, I'm personally nervous about peace officers responding to some calls because, you know, they are unarmed. They're not, they're not necessarily, they're not RCMP officers, right? We don't want to put, put our peace officers in a position where they're, they could be in danger. Um, so there, there are occasions where if something comes up that they'll sort of stand by and monitor the situation while waiting for the RCMP, which is really all, all we want them to do.
where 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 does the town grow from here because you are one year into your second term you yeah. have three years ahead of you and because this is airing in october october 21st was the last municipal election yeah. what do you hope to accomplish in the next three years is it that growth issue is it trying to, help to deal with this rural crime issue that your community while may not be facing com like other communities but it's still a prominent issue in your mind yeah, so I, you know, we want to be, we're, we're going to be focused on our growth and, and uh, bringing in some more commercial investment. Uh, we're, we're going to be working, you know, with or against the province, however you want to look at it, on, on uh, keeping the RCMP in Alberta. And not Are you in favor of keeping the RCMP? Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I just don't buy the, the province's line about how much it's going to cost. I think they're way um, underselling it, it's going to cost them a lot more to switch to an Alberta Provincial Police Force. Uh, well, I think there's changes we can make within the RCMP or the structure anyway. Um, I don't think changing the color of the uniform is going to really solve a lot of the problems that we have. I agree wholeheartedly um, on there. That. <laughs> so, but so yeah, we're, we're going to be focused on our commercial growth. We're going to be focused on, on some regional collaboration issues that we're working with. Um, you know, so at Penn Hall, we're surrounded by Red Deer County, we're close to Red Deer, we're close to Innisfail. All these, all these communities, you know, work and play within each other, right? There's, we're all connected, we all share services, uh, you know, residents that, that use services in Penn Hall aren't always from Penn Hall, and, and, and it's the same, you know, our, my residents go to Red Deer, my residents go to Red Deer County, theirs come to our, our place. Uh, I, we really need to to look at how we make decisions as as regional neighbors uh, and come together and sort of support each other more. Um, Do you have a working so, relationship with the mayor of Innisfil and the um, uh, the Reeve? Of, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably get this wrong here. The Reeve of uh, Red Deer County. Red Deer County actually has a mayor, uh, but <laughs> See, I knew I was gonna get it wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm friends with both of them. Uh, we work together. We don't always agree on on some of the issues, obviously, because uh, we're looking out for our own communities. But I'm. I'm good friends with both of them, uh, and we're we're very comfortable with each other. We work very well. So that's uh, I put a lot of time and effort into to understanding the issues of of my neighbors. Um, you know, as as mayor, I was I I go to the rural municipalities of Alberta conference too. I I want to know what the counties are dealing with, some of their struggles. It's given me a lot of insight. You know, when you come at it just from the the town or city side, you don't always understand what what's going on on the other side of the thing. And I think it's important that we we understand what they're dealing with and how we can work with them and support each other. And how do you support each other? Because in a, in a municipal uh, world that we live in, it's my community first and then everyone else second. Yeah. And uh, because you want the best for your community, you want the, uh, you want the grant money, you want the funding for that infrastructure upgrade. You want that funding for X, Y, and Z. How hard is it to balance the, let's work together as a region compared to let's work together just for the best of my community. Well, it's really easy to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot harder to do it because, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of it comes down to money. Um, you know, when you're, when you're a community, you, you might be looking to your county saying, Hey, we, we need some financial support for our facilities because we can show you that 40% of these users come from Red Deer County and in your only funding you know, 7% of this, uh, of this thing. Um, yeah, counties can look at it at, from a different perspective and they don't, they don't see it the same way we see it. So that's where the, that's where it gets bogged down. I mean, we can sit and, and have a meeting together and talk about how we're, we want to work together. And it's really easy. We all, we all agree on it. Uh, and then when it gets to the, the nuts and bolts of it, and you really want to figure out, okay, what does working together mean? It is tough. Um, we go back and forth all the time. We probably don't meet uh, in that capacity near as much as we should because there's so much going on. Um, you know, one of the issues, count, like for me, I have Red Deer County. That's my county. Red Deer County has seven municipalities inside Red Deer County, right? So it's it's there's a lot more going on for them necessarily than there is with Penhall. So it, it's a challenge, but. Um, I want to be I'm just cautious of time here because I want to make sure you get back to your conference that you're at. But I want to speak about the conference here for a second because we are... I think two days or if not a day as of recording this from when you were just awarded the Alberta Municipalities Award for Excellence. 
Um, you you were given this award at the president's dinner earlier this week as recording this. Uh, what does this mean for you to be recognized by your fellow colleagues from across Alberta in this manner? Uh, it's something I'm very proud of, and I take a lot of. Uh, I'm just very, I'm very thankful. You know, I, I have I have a council crew that has supported me through both terms uh, that really make my job easy and make me look good in a lot of ways. Um, I'm, I'm very proud to represent Penhold. I'm very proud to receive something like this. I'm, I'm not always comfortable talking about myself in that way, uh, but it it's something that um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm proud to have received it. It's gonna it's gonna sit on my trophy case. I can tell you that. <laughs> well, that's what I like to hear, and I, yeah. th- I apologize for throwing that in there. I just wanted to make I, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that in this. And congratulations on the award to your worship. But Thank I want to ask the last. The, the, I'm going to turn to the last segment of the show now, and this is the, this is the this is the part that I really get to find out about your community and who you are. Okay. Mayor Mike, what makes Penhold such a unique place to live and work? You know, it's the sense of community. Uh, so I've lived in Penhold my whole life, and when I was young, we had this sense of community. So the, you know, I I, I have a story of when I was young, me and my me and my brother and some of his friends were throwing um, this bat, but we were throwing little crab apples at cars as they would drive by in someone else's yard. Anyway, but uh, long story short, somebody saw it, went and told my parents about it because they knew me, they knew where my parents lived. So they pulled into the house that night and said, hey, just wanted you, know, you to know that your boys were, were doing this earlier. And, and that, like, that was the type of community it was, right? You, everyone looked out for each other. Everyone knew who each other was. We, at that point, we had... 1300 people we had baseball teams we had soccer teams we had all this these local groups and then Penhold went through a phase where we sort of lost all that um you know my parents got old uh, they didn't have young kids anymore we weren't growing as much so we sort of lost a generation there where then we just didn't have the volunteers didn't have the parents didn't have the kids and then all of a sudden we we started taking off again. And now I see it, I see it, we've got it back. We have that community. So we have these, we have local groups, we have local sports teams, we have schools overflowing. Um, and like I say, like I said before, anytime we do a community event, it's over, it's overflowing with with kids and families. And, and you know, people know who, who their neighbors are. They they look after each other's kids, they they play together, they work together, they they do all that stuff. Um, and it's just so, it's so great to see because that's really what you want when you're building a community is, is the community part, right? I mean, you can, you can put houses and, and streets in a line and, and make it look good, but you really need that, that neighborly feeling and, and you need people to be looking out for each other. And we've got that right now. It's, it's awesome. You, you paint a, a pretty good picture of the town of Penhold in that last statement there. So the the question I need to follow up in, with is, if I was a tourist and I was coming through the town of Penhold, what things should I be looking for to do? What stop should I guarantee check off my list? If I'm stopping in Penhold, I need to do X, Y, and Z while I'm there. What are those areas for that well, you, tourist should to go come- to? You've got to come in uh, September for to our fall festival because that is that is our our best event of the year. Um, you know, every year it's a little bit different, but we have. Uh, I mean, it starts with a with a Friday night beer fest. We have craft breweries and distilleries and wineries from all over Alberta come, uh, and, and you can go have have samples from everywhere. We have uh, fireworks. We have a parade where. Um, we're one of the few communities left that you're allowed to um, toss candy, I should say. Not, we don't throw it. We only toss it. Uh, and, uh, I mean, you can see the streets lined with, with hundreds of kids. Um, so Fall Festival is definitely when you need to check Penhold out. It's always the second weekend in September right after the long weekend. Uh, and that's our, that's our big thing, I guess. What makes, what, what's your favorite part about Penhold? What is the spot that if you're having a hard day and if you go downtown or go out to a park and just sit there, you can refresh, recoup, and just refocus yourself. What's your favorite part about the community? Um, we have a campground in the community right by the multiplex. And that's actually where I got married. Uh, and we'll go, we'll camp there just for a week or so at a time in the summer. I mean, we only live three blocks away, but it's just a place for us to go. We can still work from there, do everything we do, get the kids to school. 
Um, but it's it's just sort of where we can go refresh. Uh, we like, uh, there's one spot where we got married. We like to go camp there. You can look out on the ponds, watch the birds come in, watch people fish. Uh, yeah, it's just beautiful. Well, Your Worship, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down and uh, have a conversation about your community, but also yourself. I appreciate it. And thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. This is a lot of fun. Glad we did this. So with that, I want to remind everyone, put down your social media account for at least five minutes a day. Go have a conversation with somebody because it helps our democracy, helps our society, and helps us be a better people. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews Municipal Month. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, keep talking.